Hey coffee nerds, I'm sure you already know how to turn these things into coffee. Uh, but what I'm going to show you today is something very different. It's actually turning coffee beans or seedlings, growing your own coffee, and then turning that into that. I know, growing your own coffee at home. So here I'm going to step you through the process of everything you need to know from taking a coffee bean, growing it, creating a little seedling, all the way through to uh, growing your own plants, uh, harvesting your beans, uh, picking the, uh, the ripe red coffee cherries. Uh, the next process is to actually take that cherry uh, and get the, the green bean out of it. So you'll end up with the, the, the cherry and the bean. Uh, you'll end up with something like that once it's dried. And once you've dried it, uh, you, that kind of looks like it's ready to be roasted, but it's not. Um, you actually have to take the husk off it. So you kind of peel it and uncover a green coffee bean like that. Uh, and then of course we can take that green coffee bean and roast it. After that, you already know how to turn it into one of these. Okay, coffee nerds, let's have a look at the very first part of the process, which is actually growing the coffee at home. So this is a, uh, a little seedling that is sprouting out. And as you can see, if you look very closely, that it's actually a little coffee bean that's being grown. Uh, and so what we do is we can take either the coffee cherries, uh, the, the peeled coffee cherries, which look like that, um, or we can take the dried uh, beans themselves with the husk on and plant either of those three. So let's go and plant some and I'll show you how they're planted. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, these uh, semi-dried coffee beans with the husk on uh, and we're just going to plant them and I'm going to show you how they like to be planted. So here I've just half filled this container with some potting mix and it's a standard potting mix from any hardware store. Uh, I'm also going to put a little bit of sand in it. Now they quite like sandy soil or, or soil that's a little bit more denser. So I'm just going to put a little bit of sand on there as well and just mix that in to the soil. Next, I'm going to take some of these, uh, the coffee beans, as I mentioned before, with the, with the husk still on, and I'm just going to sprinkle them on top. So it looks like that. Cover with about one centimeter or half an inch of soil on top. And then I'm just going to finish with a little bit more sand on top just to, and shake that in. And then I'm just going to water it. Put a little bit of water on top. Now you'll notice that I didn't actually put any holes in the bottom of this container. And that's because I want to try and keep the soil really moist. Uh, coffee is a tropical fruit tree and it likes to be nice and, uh, and nice and wet uh, in the soil. So uh, there's currently no holes on that. Um, now I'm just going to put that in a nice warm place uh, inside. Um, the best time to plant is around uh, summer or springtime. Um, so when the temperatures start to warm up because they're again they're a tropical fruit tree they like it nice and warm. So we're just going to keep that inside and It'll take around six to eight weeks for the beans to actually come out of the soil uh, and you'll start seeing some green leaves appear. Okay, on to the next step. Let's go and check out what some coffee trees look like as they're growing. So here's how I grow some of these. I mean, I just use a plastic bag when they get a bit bigger, um, soil and mix. Uh, and again, just one little hole in the bottom to try and get the moisture out, um, but it certainly grows pretty quickly. Uh, and that's what the tree looks like itself. So coffee trees grow really well in pots. In fact, just as long as you keep a, a base underneath them. This one's only a couple of years old and you, as you can see, it's starting to have its own uh, berries on it. So they grow really well in pots, but let's have a look at them, how they grow in the ground. So here's a coffee tree we've got in the garden. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's got a, nice, a few nice red berries coming on it. Uh, it's about probably eight to 10 feet tall at the moment. Um, and it will get a little bit taller than that. Here's another one, and this one's a little bit different. It's actually got a lot of different trunks coming off it, whereas that last one only had one. Okay, 
Okay, coffee nerds. So here I have picked uh, just some of the, one of the trees that I've got outside. Now this particular variety that I've got that I'm growing is what's called a bourbon uh, strain of a, a Rebecca bean. So um, these leaves that you'll see are, are quite curly um, and that's um, pretty much part of that strain, that type of coffee bean. Uh, that region really comes sort of from Africa. They're growing off the coast of, um, of Madagascar around the Mauritius area or region. And it's sort of comes, the, the Bourbon name comes from the Bourbon dynasty, which was the royal family um, at the time. So uh, this particular bean, and so what we do is we wait until we've got these nice deep red colored berries or cherries. And you know, then we pick them. So they start off uh, very green, when they grow, they, they're sort of a little flower that comes out and then their little, the coffee bean or the cherry grows, it becomes green and then it sort of turns a light green and a yellow color. Uh, and then eventually the berries go deep red. So when the berries are deep red like this, uh, or the cherries, I should say, you can pick them. Uh, they just, they're pretty easy to pick. They just come off like that. And then we'll show you how to peel them. So there you have it. It's now time to take your coffee cherry and peel it. Now. When it comes to this part of the process, there's not really a quick, I haven't found a quick way of doing it. Essentially, you can take the um, the cherry straight off the tree like this and give it a bit of a squeeze between your, your, your fingers whoop, and out pop. You'll end up with the coffee cherry, which is the, looks like that. And you'll end up with a slimy little uh, coffee bean. Now they are very slippery um, um, and so they're sort of hard to control. So, you know, the more people we've got doing it, the more hands, the faster it becomes. <laughs> there is one way, of, another way that I've uh, been using, which is the idea of, um, if, if you want to try and give them in a hurry, there's two ways actually. One is to soak them for a couple of days. And if you soak them for a couple of days, the, the flesh actually gets quite uh, loose and they're easier to pop out. Um, and the other way, if you're in a hurry, is to just pour some boiling water over them or just dunk them into some boiling water for a few seconds. Um, and then it sort of softens the cherry up as well. So as you squeeze them, you'll get two coffee beans out of each one of these cherries. And every now and then you get three. So the next step in our process is to take these slimy green berries, or I should say beans, uh, and then dry them out so they look something like this. Now, how do you do that? You can do that a couple of ways. Normally they would take, um, you put them on some um, shea cloth or something outside and let them dry for a few days. Uh, unfortunately, that just means that possums or something like that can eat them at the time. So the other way to do that and the way that I did these ones here is I just put them into a dry oven with the fan on for, for a while. And after a couple of days, they actually dried out quite nicely. Um, I didn't have to wash them. They were just like that. And then now they're, as you can hear, dried coffee beans. Also, as they uh, dry out, they'll get lighter and lighter. So these ones are still about 70% uh, moisture uh, inside the bean itself. And uh, we've, we need to peel the husk off these, which is the next step, and uh, uh, to actually get the green coffee bean out of this. So our next step is to turn this dried coffee bean uh, with the husk on to take the husk off and leave, reveal the green coffee bean inside. So again, there's no real quick process. This can be painstaking, um, but if you give it a crunch, the bean will pop out. Now, I, I'm not sure how they do this commercially, but I can show you how I've worked out how to do it a little bit faster than this process. Uh, and we'll do that now. So that's the green bean. Uh, there's still a, a little silver silver paper type thing on the outside of that. We just we leave that on because that'll come off in the roasting. There you have it. So as discussed, it's not easy to get the, the husks off the green coffee bean. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to stick them uh, in one of these Nutribullet type uh, blenders and I'm just going to give it a quick whiz.
Now this is not the best way because you will end up by wrecking a few of your green coffee beans in the process, but uh, at least it's a quicker way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stick them into a, uh, a, a sieve or a strainer and I'm going to try and get most of the smaller pieces off. which still leaves a little bit of husk in there. So let's try and find another way of getting rid of that husk. So here we are with the, uh, with the husks and the green beans in here. And as you can see, as I shake them, we do get rid of a little bit, but I've also brought out the trusty hairdryer. Now you see why I came outside to do this part. So there you have it. I've just used the hairdryer and I've got rid of most of the husk uh, and I just have the green bean. So here's the result uh, of our little hairdryer exercise. As you can see, we've blended the beans and then we've put them in the hairdryer. But unfortunately, we've got a few that are broken up. And so, um, so that they're a little bit broken up, but that's fine because when we roast them, uh, we'll just still be able to roast them and grind them. They've got to have to be ground up eventually anyway. So here we have our green beans, our green coffee beans, and we're ready to start roasting. I'm just going to use a fry pan. Uh, and I'm going to put the fry pan on the heat, making sure that the vent's on, because we're going to make a lot of smoke. So the fry, the fry pan's on, warming up. Uh, the green beans just going to go straight in and it's going to take a few minutes. So when you're cooking these green beans, uh, it takes a while for all the oils inside the beans to heat up. Uh, but it's also good to remember when they are nearly cooked, that you have to take them off a little bit earlier because they will continue to cook once they're out of the pan. They will continue to darken. Now also in this process, any husk that is still on the bean I will start to burn off in this process as well. And this little silver skin that's on the bean, that will burn off here as well. Now these beans are starting to toast up nicely and the smell that's coming off them is amazing. They're sort of a medium brown color at the moment. But as you can see, they're getting darker with every turn. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's actually quite a bit of smoke coming. And now the beans have reached the point where they start to crack. Okay, I'm just going to turn it down a bit because some of my beans are ready. And you can see there's a lot of smoke coming off here. Now, I'm not, after, I'm not after a really dark roast of this particular roast, so I'm going to pull these off a little bit earlier. They're starting to really cook up. And I'm just going to tip them out on a nice cold bench. Well, the reason I'm doing that is because I just want them to start to cool down a little bit. So I just want them to take some of the temperature out. And they've gone quite uh, shiny as you can see. Uh, and that shine is a lot of the oils coming out of the bean.
So I'm going to. So I'm going to just. It's quite warm. Now that bench is quite oily where the oils were coming out of it, but I just want to pull these off. So they'll stop cooking. So there you have it. Now it's still darken up a little bit, but that's how you roast coffee bits. As you can see, as I flip them over, there's still a little bit of the silver skin that comes off them. So you can take them outside again and give them a, give them some of that skin. And there you have it. So there you have it, freshly roasted coffee. Now one thing to note though, when you have roasted it, it actually does take a couple of days uh, in a jar just for, for the, all, the, all of the uh, oils to settle. So um, I've found that for best results, give it a couple of days before you start making your own brew out of it. So there you have it coffee nerds. That is how to grow your own coffee and all the way through to roasting your own coffee beans. Uh, this blend that we just did was slightly lighter than the, than the previous one I've done. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, blending that up and, uh, and giving it a taste. So that's all the way from the, the tree uh, to the coffee cherry, peeling the coffee cherry to leave that nice slimy little number, uh, drying them out to create your own dried coffee beans, taking the husk off them to create the green beans and then roasting them in the fry pan. What you can't smell is the place smells like freshly roasted coffee right now. Mm. It's so good. See you nerds. <laughs>